Hello, uh, here is the demonstration for my practical. I'm Adam Katsia, 2998-2995. Um, so basically, with my simulating model, I start with a stereo music file. So it's 16-bit floats um, and it's stereo. So there's two channels um, that I need to consider. Two, I think they're pretty much identical channels though. Um, and all I really do in Simulink is display frequency and time plots and uh, for the input and output signal. Um, and I encode the input signal originally. So I'm going to start uh, with a look at the input signal versus the encoded signal. So um, what happened here was I dropped down the bit rate the bit levels to 8 bits at this point. So it's encoded into 8 bits from the 16 bits. So here's the original. Um. And uh, okay, so the blue spectrum, the blue lines in both graphs are from the original recording. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you the recording afterwards, after the encoding has taken place. So now this is uh, in eight, when it's an 8-bit. Okay, so when I've dropped it down to 8-bits, I've noticed, um, I've noticed a sort of background hum um, throughout the whole uh, video. And uh, I think this is clearly shown by the frequency plots. If you look at the frequency plots, the, the signal is the original, the blue signal. Um, so the components that are part of the main signal or the main parts of the frequency spectrum are obviously here, they're the high points. And uh, the rest of the signal is a sort of background noise, um, according to my understanding. But the background noise, the background noise on the signal which has been encoded is much higher than the level of the background noise of the original signal. And I think uh, that's to do with loss of quality uh, when you drop down, when you drop the resolution of the sound. Um, so that's what I've noted. Um, anyway, after, after encoding, I go to MATLAB and that's where we do the next part. So here I start from the server. Um, I extract each stream from the stereo here, and then I convert them into nibbles. This is so I can, uh, instead of instead of converting them into binary digits, I convert them into nibbles because my modulation scheme, which I'm implementing, is a 16 quadrature amplitude modulation, or the order is 16. So that means I have each um, each level in that modulation scheme. Um, there are 16 possible levels I can have, have, which is, which coincides with four bits or a nibble. So I use a stream of nibbles. Um, so I feed this nibble stream into the into the quadrature amplitude modulation scheme, and here are my constellation plots. Uh, I plot both, and I plot both um, constellation diagrams for each stream, and uh, so that's essentially the first part sort of done. Then I add noise at this at, at the server side to sort of um, simulate the noise through a channel. But uh, and I capture the real and imaginary parts, and then uh, I open a connection with the client and I send the real and imaginary parts for each sound stream. So these four commands, and I close the socket. On the client side, um, I. Well, I sort the client afterwards, and I um, essentially received the data that I sent from the server to the client. So the real and imaginary parts, I put them together, and then I uh, I will plot the signals which have had noise added to them. So they're more they're noisy signals now, and then um, I demodulate the the signals back into their noble form essentially um, from the from the frequency plot or from the yeah from the the demodulation algorithm and I convert them from nibbles back to decimals again um, 
I then play the final sound and um, I save the stereo. I create a new stereo file from the sound that I've just uh, acquired. And uh, then I go back to Simulink to test. But I'm just going to run the server and client scripts. Um, also play the sound at the end. So your server client communication going on. Um, okay, so the bottom two constellations are the noisy signal and the top two constellations are the signal before noise has been added. So they're all perfectly on top of each other, like um, each level. So you that's why you can't see any blue here. It's kind of the red crosses on top of it. Um, but yeah, okay. And uh, these, the noise is, isn't that high, so they all fall within a margin close enough to the initial point so that um, when I demodulate them, they all retain their original values. And uh, this can be definitely seen if I look at the Simulink model again for the output sound. So. Here in this plot, I compare the encoded, the encoded signal with the output signal, which I've written, which I've extracted from this file here. So, so I notice that um, you can't actually tell the difference between the the encoded the original encoded stream and the output final stream. So that means it's retained all its information perfectly. Um, you can't see the graphs are on top of each other. Uh, yeah, so the signals are exactly the same. So that concludes my demonstration. Uh, thank you.